have four days there. That should be plenty of time. October the 4th. October the 4th. October the 4th. If we lose four days, that epidemic, well, we could be in the past a whole month and it wouldn't take away any time for the present. Let's go. Look at this. Today is Saturday, October the 7th. Well, sure, mister. Jeff, what's the matter? Those computers, I should have guessed when they dumped us in the wrong place. We should have been here October 4th, remember? What difference does that make? We still have four days to find Dr. Henderson. Oh, yeah. I'm Dr. Phillips. Doug Phillips. I hope we haven't kept you waiting. Inside, the detector. 44 meters long. 22 meters in diameter. Mobile Tick Tock 1 to Tick Tock Base. Permission to enter Code Red Lion. Tick Tock Base. Inside, the detector. 44 meters long, 22 meters in diameter. to understand how men lived in those days, what they were thinking, man's instinctive curiosity about the past manifests itself today in a new type of archaeology. It uses a giant machine whose aim is to go back in time, whose aim is to go back in time, to understand the origins of the universe 15 billion years ago. Pretty exciting. 
associated a similar partner, but with a much higher mass called a supersymmetrical particle. Another challenge for the LHC, identify this partner. situated near Geneva at the foot of the Jura Mountains. The LEP accelerates electrons and positons. It accelerates protons which are 2,000 times heavier than electrons at a speed close to that of the speed of light. LHC, we shall have the beginnings of an answer. Inside, the detector, 44 meters long, 22 meters in diameter. And there you have it, the 1966 CERN Titanic time tunnel. Two films one in 1966. This is when a time travel series aired that eerily mimicked the current and future experiments at CERN. The series was called The Time Tunnel, complete with UN white helmets, deep underground marine bases, and super colliders. And when you break down what CERN admits to experimenting on, it sounds an awful lot like time travel. Sending heavy particles, matter, me and you, at speeds approaching the speed of light, to change those particles' perception of elapsed time. When you really think about it, that is exactly what they're doing. And it's only a matter of time, no pun intended, before they send a living tissue through the wormhole to try and trick time. They shall seek to change times and laws. It is written in the Bible. Is it possible? In the first episode of the Time Tunnel, a man travels back in time to the deck of the Titanic, the maiden voyage on April 10th, 1912. Saturday, April 13th. Are you superstitious? Saturday, April 13th. Let's see how this fits into all of this. We know that October 4th is a very important time travel date. It just so happens that on October 4th, time was changed in the year 1582 by a Pope Gregory. 
giving us the Gregorian calendar. And on October 4th, 1582, 11 days disappeared from the calendar. Now here's the clincher. Pope Gregory died on April 10th, the day of the Titanic's maiden voyage, hundreds of years later. And here are some more spooky synchronicities. We know about Baron Trump's adventures that seem to predict Baron Trump, the president's son, and how many are perceiving this anomaly as time travel. Well, a similar thing happened with the Titanic. A book was written 14 years before it sank that seemed to predict it. And there's more. Pope Gregory, you know, the guy who changed time in the, in the 1500s, had a beef with the then Queen of England and sought to overthrow her in his war against Protestants. Now, anti-Catholic sentiment was strong in England in the years leading up to the Titanic. The boat builders even would spray no Pope on the sides of the ships. And then there's an, even an urban legend saying that they would imprint anti-Catholic sentiments on the rivets of the boat. Now, King George V, who was the king at the time of the sinking of the Titanic, was coronated a year before a future pope was there to represent the Catholic Church. He gave the king an iodine-soaked salutation upon the king's coronation, which he claims accidentally happened. He spilled some iodine on the salutation, which is like a letter, and ended up just soaking the whole thing in iodine. And guess what? Iodine is most abundant in seawater. This was a year before the Titanic sunk. Was the Titanic some kind of retaliation 300 and something years later against Protestantism? Was there some kind of supernatural weapon or maybe even just simple sabotage? They could have loaded it up with explosives and blame it on an iceberg. Now at the time, there was a law in England that anyone who wanted to ascend the throne had to renounce Catholicism. The language was pretty strong. And George V went through and softened that language to just professing your faith in Protestantism instead of renouncing Catholicism. But maybe that wasn't enough. All of this in the months leading up to the sinking of the Titanic. And then, miraculously, just after the Titanic, Catholicism began to flourish in England and around the world, bringing England to their knees in submission to the papacy 